Hey, we are live and in living color right here on the Radio Random Network. I am Hashtag RDM, Russell Devin McClain. We've got a great show for you today. I am going to be joined by Michael Sung Lee from the Netflix original series, Fuller House. With all of that said, let's go ahead and get on with the show. And here we go, fixing to be live and in color right here with the one and only Michael Sun Lee. Hello. Hey, Michael. What's up, man? Hey, brother. Yeah, Russell what's McClain up? From the Radio Random Network. Up, I, are you there? I'm here. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you fine, friend. How's your hump day going so far? Not bad, not bad. It's uh, bright and sunny and windy here in uh, Los Angeles, so I'm doing pretty good. Doing pretty good. That is awesome. I've been a busy man as of late, uh, Michael. One thing that uh, you got going going on is the brand new Netflix original series, Fuller House, which you're a part of. Uh, you're also a part of the uh, the original Full House. Uh, is that correct? No, that's not correct. But really? a lot of people think that I yeah that I was that little kid who played uh, a little Harry back in the. Uh, Back in the original, but that was not me. But we do look alike, right? <laughs> you, you do. You you play. Uh, so you play the the grown up Harry. I play the grown up Harry. Yeah. That that's awesome. And uh, you know what? I, I apologize. I, I did. I for whatever reason, my mind was on that you played on the original Full House series. But uh, nonetheless, you're still that that the show is very relevant right now and very very popular. A matter of fact, a couple of weeks ago, I sat down with with my children and we went through the whole the, the you know all, all 13 episodes there on netflix and uh wow how long did that take you guys it took us all night as a matter of fact <laughs> i think we finished up the last one about it was it must have been about eight thirty in the morning you know we started uh it, we started rather late uh, on a friday night so yeah about eight thirty seven yeah. in the morning with the, the last episode played something like that oh that must have been fun it, very, very much so. Very much so. So we'll talk about Full House and all that good stuff uh, a little later. Let's let's talk a little bit about your career, man. How did you get started in acting? Oh my God! So I got started in acting uh, in college. I was uh, born and raised in Hawaii, and when I entered college, my first semester I was flunking out. So a counselor suggested I take some acting classes to get my GPA up. And so that's what I did. I took a couple of acting classes and that's when I got, I got hooked. And it also, it also, uh, got my, my grade point average up. You know, I guess when you do stuff you enjoy, you know, you, you enjoy other stuff, you know, as well. So that's how I, that's how I grad, that's how I got to graduate college actually from doing, from doing theater. Although I, I didn't, uh, graduate with a theater degree. I graduated with a, uh, communications degree so yeah that's how i got started that that, that is very awesome Hello? i apologize for oh. whatever reason i have a delay on my end we have some bad weather coming in over here so we're down here in louisiana ah, so okay, okay. It's a yeah, different. Yeah. so so what if if you wasn't if if acting wasn't in place and your career wasn't where it is now what, what would you be doing as, as a profession Gosh, I have no idea, but my, uh, my survival job is a, I'm a bartender. I do event uh, bartending, you know, so I sort of freelance and I work at a couple of places regularly. So yeah, that's what I do. Go into people's homes and, you know, various, 
venues and, and, and you know, events and, and, and bartends, sling drinks, you know. So that, that that's keeping me alive. <laughs> that, that's awesome. That's awesome. So what, what, what's your favorite? Uh, do you have a... Uh... Do you have a, a, a favorite drink that you like to make? Is do you have a specialty? Um, I like to make right now. Uh, I enjoy making uh, old fashions and Manhattan's. You know, good old those good old bourbon drinks. That's yes. that's what I enjoy making. That's it's it's very popular these days here in, in Los Angeles, especially. You know, very much so. So let's let's talk a little bit about that Los Angeles. So, you, so you're out in the nightlife, pretty much, correct? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, working working in it mostly. Yeah, yeah. I mean, what are some of the places? Do you? What about like the whiskey a go go? Do you do you go places like that? Do you go hang places like that? Yeah, only only when I go to party. That's you know that's that's when I get to go out. But usually when I go out, it's usually during the weeknight because I'm usually working on the weekends, and uh, the only time for me to go out is like you know during the weeknights. So. Yeah, I, I I enjoy my uh, my tequila and and beer. <laughs> <laughs> so originally you were from uh, you said you were from Hawaii, correct? Yeah, Honolulu, island of Oahu. Uh, so I mean, was it a big culture shock coming from Honolulu to uh, to Los Angeles to follow your dreams? A little, uh, yeah, a little bit because the people relate very differently uh, in Hawaii than they do in you know Los Angeles. Um, so that was, that was kind of, that kind of, uh, took, uh, getting used to, you know, how, how people relate here. Um, cause in Hawaii it's a melting pot. Like everybody gets along, you know, all the races get along, all the, the classes get along, you know, so, but here, you know, it seems a little bit segregated, even though, even though it's very diverse here, it's still, you know, segregated to a degree, you know? Yes, indeed. So, so not only are you an actor and a bartender, you're also a producer, correct? I produced uh, one movie uh, a few years ago, uh, a horror movie about a about a Japanese ghost. Oh, really? And the movie has not come out come out yet. It's not. It's still in post production. You know, <laughs> when you're doing an independent movie, that's that's how it is sometimes. You know. Yes, indeed. I, I understand that completely. So, I mean, so what kind of uh, uh, what kind of challenges uh, do you face as far as like being in uh, you know if you, the independent movie things? I mean, what are, what are some of the, the main challenges that you that you go through? Uh, well, producing a movie, the main challenge you have is raising the money and having enough money and gathering all the resources. If you don't have a lot of money, that's that's the main challenge. And then once you get through the shooting and, and the production of it, um, there's post-production, which requires more money, um, <laughs> you know, to finish. So right. that's why some of these movies uh, take so long to come out. You know, a lot of them are always a work in progress and they, and they, uh, they take a while to get completed, especially, you know, if you're not backed by a studio or, or, or you know your rich uncle or something, you know, it'd, it'd be a challenge. <laughs> yes, indeed. So, so no, ri- no rich uncle, uncle on your side of the family, I guess. No rich uncle. I wish. <laughs> what about John Stamos? He he makes a good uncle. Yeah, I know. He's he's, he's the most. He's the best looking uncle I've ever I've, I've ever seen. You know. Yes, I mean indeed. that guy looks better in person than he does on TV. Let me tell you. Really. Did, yeah, did you, yeah. Did, did you did you have a lot of interaction with uh, with with the stars with John and 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 uh, uh, the other guys? Uh, drawing a blank right now, uh, Danny. Yeah, yeah. Bob Saget and, Bob and Dave Saget. Coulier. I didn't have any scenes with. Yeah, I didn't have any scenes with them, but I had a scene, you know, with uh, of course John Stamos. But he came in just for you know the day, just for a few hours to shoot his bit. Because right, right. he's off doing his own show, Grandfathered, and he's a producer on both shows, Grandfathered and, and Fuller House. So he came in for a, a couple of hours, and he was he was awesome. He, I mean, what you see is what you get. He was just funny and charming, and you know, just just he he was just great. He was just great. Yes, indeed. Well, what about the the girls, uh, Stephanie, and 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 all of those? I mean, what was it like uh, working with those people? Oh my God, it was it was kind of 
it was kind of a surreal dream come true, especially, you know, when I, when I turned around and, and the, and you see the house, you know, you're in the, the Tanner household, the full house. <laughs> and I'm like, Oh my God, I'm like in the, I'm in the full house, man. I'm like that, that kind of freaked me out even more than meeting the cast. Cause the cast is very, you know, they're just very nice and friendly and just very genuine and they all get along so great. So it was, it was sort of easy to step in, you know, I wasn't familiar with the process per se, but I was, you know, they made you feel familiar with, with them and, and, and the, and, you know, and the day to day goings of a, of a sitcom. Right. So yeah, it was great. And you get the, you, you get the response from the live studio audience. So, I mean, coming from theater, that's, that's, you know, that's kind of a dream come true to have that, you know? Really? Now, did you watch Full House as a kid? I'm sure you did. Everybody did, but was you an avid watcher? Um, I I didn't I didn't uh, admit it back then, but yes, I I I, <laughs> I did watch. I didn't <laughs> I didn't watch the last few uh, seasons, the last couple seasons, because I kind of entered the workforce at that point. Right, right. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's iconic. You know, the theme song, all the catchphrases. You know, I mean, who doesn't who doesn't know about that show? I don't know anybody who doesn't know about that show. You know, right? Well, the reason I ask is something I noticed about the the Fuller House, the new show. Do you did you find uh, I don't know, a lot of it to be a little bit more uh, risque, so to speak? Maybe uh, they 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 talked about a lot of like today's issues and stuff. I mean, at one point, I mean, I mean, I remember I remember uh, Stephanie making a. Uh, uh, adjusting, uh, talking about uh, marijuana brownies. Exactly. Yeah, I know. It's it's it's. Uh, I think it's it still has those uh, good wholesome values, but it's like up to date. You know, it's it's pretty um, it's pretty current. Some of the some of the things they talk about. You know, they they broke the first wall. I think it was in the first episode. They broke the first wall and looked into the camera when they were referring to you know Michelle not being there. You know, so yeah, it is, it is, a, it is, yeah, I think it's, I think it's uh, pretty current to the times, you know, some of the things they talk about, I was kind of shocked at, yes, but indeed. you know, yeah. it's still, it is 2016, you know. Right, right, definitely, most definitely. I mean, you know, what what got me was, I mean, they had the stuff for the kids, yeah, I mean, you was, it was cool, and but the, the, the thing with the, uh, you know, they, they also had a lot of different, uh, I guess, uh, Talk, uh, points to where a parent can also relate, I guess is the best way to put it. Yeah, yeah, because the people who used to watch it are all grown now. So, <laughs> right. You know, you kind of got to relate to them, but yet still cultivate a new, younger audience as well. So I think they I think they did a good job in, in entertaining both, you know. I mean, you can definitely sit down and watch it with your family, you know. Yes, indeed. Well, my friend, I'm not going to keep you too much longer, but before I go, it's something that I ask all my guests, and it's, uh, yeah. For do you have any advice for any uh, uh, young up and coming actors that uh, maybe want to follow in your footsteps? I do. My main advice is to embrace the unknown. That's awesome. Yeah, embrace the unknown and. Uh, yeah, that's it. And say yes, say yes. Don't don't overthink. You know, just just embrace the unknown, and say yes, and follow your instincts. Yes, indeed. You can find him on Twitter at Michael Sun Lee. He any other Correct. any 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 current projects or any projects you have you're working on that, that that we need to know about here that we haven't covered yet. Well, everything uh everything I did is coming out. Uh, this year, there's a movie called Holidays. It's a horror anthology. Um, and the segment that I was in um, is with uh, Seth Green. It's a bunch of stories, horror stories, that take place around the holidays. And um, so that's coming out. I just don't know when. I did some secondary voices on a movie called Kubo and the Two Strings. That's going to be huge. Um who else is in it? Uh, Matthew McConaughey, Charlie really? Theron, yeah, Rooney Mar. It's an animated feature brought to you by the people who brought you uh, Paranorman and and Coraline. It's stop motion animation, and it's a it's a fantastic Japanese tale. 
if you YouTube it or Google it, you'll you'll get to see a trailer. It's gonna be this thing's gonna be awesome, and I'm so I was so happy and proud to be a part of it, you know. So yeah, and I'm half Japanese, so you know that's why they hired me. I think. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed, Michael. Thank you so much for joining us today, my friend. And uh, I, I look forward to talking to you again soon. Um, All right, man. You take care of yourself out there in Los Angeles, California. And uh, if we ever get out that way, I, uh, I'll drop you a line and, and we'll have some tequila. Yeah, please do. And if I, if I get out there for Fat Tuesday or, or, or any, you any go. time, I got to get some gumbo and some, some good whiskey. <laughs> I can now the good whiskey. There's a few places, but I know right where to go for the gumbo. Just hit me up, and uh, awesome. That said, Michael, awesome. thank you so much for joining me, and we'll talk to you again soon, friend. All right, thanks a lot, man. Have a good one. You too, M- Michael Sung Lee from the Netflix original series Fuller House. What a, what a great guy. Great talk, you know. It, it was cool to talk to him, and I know a lot of you probably are wondering what the hell am I doing live here today. Well, I had some things been going on, you know, um, and we've been taking care of them, and, and we're we're going to continue to do what we do. Uh, Mudtooth this week's not going to be here. Um, <clears throat> he's out uh, doing the Mudtooth thing, but uh, got a lot going on. And and I'll tell you what, we'll tell you what we're going to do. We'll take a little break. And uh, when I come back, I'll I'll give you uh, all the details about all of what's happening before we close the show here today, and uh, give you a little something maybe to look forward to. I'm not real sure. Uh, <laughs> we're still working it out. But with that said, I'll tell you what. Let's let's do it. Let's let's play let's play a let's play a uh, play a music track here, and uh, I'll be right back in about four minutes or so. Don't go nowhere. we are back yes we are back flying by the seat of our pants no if you're just tuning in you're listening to 
I guess uh, the Radio Random Network production of uh, Russell McLean Live, I guess, Wednesday night. Uh, I wasn't going to be able to show out this week. Got a lot going on, getting ready for the Easter holiday. Uh, but uh, with all of that said, uh, at this time, usually during the show, you would hear a uh, an ad for Amazon or or Google or uh, or maybe uh, Audible Trial or one of the many affiliates that were uh that we work with here at the uh, Radio Random Network well um the thanks to our governor uh John Bell Edwards um they passed a uh a tax and and I'm not going to get in all political on this cuz I I I I don't really understand a lot of the terms and everything but basically uh, no more affiliate programs for podcasters or, or independent radio stations or, or syndicated shows in the state of Louisiana, which, you know, I, in a way I do understand why they did it, but in another way it hurts a little bit. Uh, it stings a lot, actually. Uh, been working at this for about two and a half years. I've had many notable guests. Uh, a matter of fact, I pretty much, I work my ass off and, um, well, I'm not going to be compensated for none of it. Uh, everything had just started, you know, it took two and a half years to actually start seeing a little revenue. And, um, I don't know. I'm I can't quit doing this because now it's a part of me. This is my passion. So there's a will, there's a way I know mud tooth ain't going to quit because he loves it just as much as I do or hell, maybe more. I mean, he loves to talk. I mean, if you ever listen to any of our shows, you know that, but, uh, you know, and sometimes really for me, it ain't all about the money. You know, sometimes, sometimes your comp, an accomplishment is, is talking to one of your heroes. And that's what I've done on here. And I've had fun doing it. So, uh, you know, next week, hopefully by, uh, uh, you know, with a, with a prayer, we're going to return to our regular programming, but we're going to do it live from now on. I like this. I like doing it live. It's a little pressure. Yes. It's a little nerve wracking. Yes. But, uh, it's okay. It's okay. I, I can do it. Uh, but with all of that said, it's almost go home time. And, um, you know, I'm going to stop this and, uh, we're going to eat some dinner and, and, have a good time here at the uh, the the Ponderosa. But uh, if you want to know more about the Radio Random Network, you can go to RadioRandomNetwork.com. You can find out all about what we do. You can listen to past interviews with the likes of Charlie Daniels. Lori Morgan was on last week. We're going to have some pro wrestlers on in a couple of weeks, too. It's WrestleMania, damn it. I want to talk to Dale Wilkes. Uh, you know, I I think the format of the, everything is going to be changing soon, and I'm cool with it. Uh the, I guess now I have to focus on what I'm good at, what I'm, what I'm really, really good at. And I've been fighting it because I'm going to be honest with you people. I'm, I'm 30 years old and, and I, I've been playing music all my life. It, it's been, it's been a part of me, but sometimes, sometimes it just gets too much. It gets to be way too much. And, uh, but I got to strike before I get too old to strike, I guess it's the best way to put it. And, um, yeah, I'm going to be putting together a tour. Uh, I'm going to pursue, pursue my music career. I'm going to take you on the journey. And uh, we, we're going to do it that way. We, we, you know, that, that that's the best thing for me to do is to... Uh, you know, get that going, get that done. And with that said, guys, if you want to know more information about me, my name is Russell McClain. You can go to RussellMcClain.com, keep up with all my tour dates and everything. Hopefully be coming to a city town near you. Uh, I said that wrong. It's okay. <laughs> there, there's people in the chat room. I don't know what the hell you're, I can't, I can't, uh, I'm learning this. This is all new. It's kind of like a test, but it's okay. Uh, as I said, we're gonna. I'm gonna start pushing my music career. I, I don't want to be, uh, you know, a big time famous guy. I just want to tour around, make some money as an independent musician, and I want to keep doing interviews and doing this. And uh, you know, being on the road, maybe uh, you know, I can do interviews with uh, 
with some of the people that I've connected with on Twitter. By the way, you can follow me on Twitter at R U S S M C L A uh twenty twelve. Shout out to my Potter and family, uh community on there. Uh the show will be better next week, I promise. The show it'll be a better format where we'll, we'll, I'll have a little bit more roadmap. Mudtooth is gonna be with me. And uh, we'll be doing a live show probably next Wednesday. You can hear me live here next Tuesday or something like that. I don't know. Just stay up with us with Russell uh, Radio Random Network dot com. And with all that said, I- I'm ready to uh, to relax, ready to uh, to do my thing. So uh, here's a sneak peek of, of what's to come with my music career, and uh, hope you enjoy it. And uh, thank you so much for tuning in and subscribing. iHeartRadio, iTunes, Stitcher Radio, SoundCloud, wherever you're listening to us from. Be sure and leave us a five-star review. I'm Russell McLean. This is the Radio Random Network. And we are out. Yeah.